So welcome back. In this session, we are going to discuss about the commutative property for whole numbers. And we'll be covering the following three topics. First, I'll give you an introduction of what do we mean by commutative property. Then we discuss whether the addition of whole numbers satisfies the commutative property or not. And then we also discuss whether subtraction satisfies the commutative property or not. Now, uh, let's begin with our uh, first uh, topic, which is what is commutative property? Now, uh, just to give you a basic idea on what do we mean by commutative property? What it means in very simple words is that it is related to doing mathematical operation in any order. So let me just write it out here for here. So uh, doing mathematical operation in any order that is it so um, having said that let me just uh, take an example and uh, with that you will be able to understand it clearly so we will straight away go and discuss the commutative property for um, addition so before we do that let me just change this uh, paper to a graph paper okay so now our second discussion is we will be checking the commutative property for addition now in order to check that let us take our favorite example of a number line okay now uh, and before that we need to take a pair of numbers which we are going to add so let us take uh, just any number pick up a random let's say that we are going to do 2 plus 3 okay. now I want to show this operation using the number line so I hope that you remember uh, we used to do this in the uh, we, 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 we did this operation earlier if you remember using a number line right so uh, let me just select the line so that we can so here we have our line okay and now let me just write down all the numbers over here 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 now let us let us do this addition 2 plus 3 so the way we do addition is first we travel towards 2 so we have here 2 and now we have to add 3 in it one by one so we go 1 then we go jump again it's one unit this is 4 and then we jump again one more time which is a three third time so this gives us five okay. so two plus three using a number line gives us five now let us have a look at this thing very closely so what i have done i have taken two and then i have added three to it as is shown in the line what happens if i do three plus that is we simply change the order of the numbers right we are just exchanging the order of the number so let us just again do this on the number line so we draw this line here and we write our numbers so it starts from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 so now when we have to do 3 plus 2 we start at 3 so this is 3 and now we have to move 2 units towards the right hand side right so we go 1 unit 2 that is it gives us to 3 and then we come here to 5 wow so again we ended up at 5 now let us reflect a bit on what we have done here so what have we done here what have we done here so we have we first added 2 plus 3 we added 3 units to 2 and we arrived at 5 and we changed the order of the addition in which we added 2 into 3 
but we still saw that the result is 5. So if I want to generalize this, right, how do I generalize this? I can say that the sum is same, right, even if the order of addition is changed. In fact, you can try this out for any set of numbers and you really don't need to use a number line every time. You can try it for different numbers. For example, 5 plus 4 gives you 9. And then again, you try the other way around in which you do 4 plus 5. That will also give you 9. And you can just use a number line to kind of uh, uh, prove this, right? So this essentially implies that two whole numbers can be added in any order right and therefore therefore we say that addition is commuted for whole numbers. This is what we proved that addition is commutative for whole numbers. It's an important result. Okay. So now let us try to do the same thing for subtraction. Okay. Let's try to do the same thing for subtraction. Right, so we are going to check the commutative property for subtraction. So again, we will do this test in the same way as we did earlier. What we will do is first we take up any two numbers. Okay. So uh, in this case, let us say that we will be taking, uh, let's say, 9 minus 5. We are subtracting 5 from 9. And what do we get is 4. Right. You can do this on the number line and prove it for yourself. And uh, other thing which you could which we have to do is to change the numbers so now what we will try to do is we will subtract 9 from 5 so earlier we are subtracting 5 from 9 now we are subtracting 9 from 5 now what do you get here definitely it's not going to be a whole number and it will also be different the number the result is going to be different so you can try this for several other examples. For example, you can try, let's say, 999 minus 9. It will give you something like 990. And then you change the order of the numbers. You do 9 minus 999. So again, what will this number be? So I, I believe that this will be introduced when uh, you are learning about integers. right? The number that comes here is a negative number, which is a part of another set of numbers called integers. But yeah, this number is not a whole number and the results are different. So I can conclude that the results are different. Right? The results are different if the order of subtraction is changed. And as a result of this, we conclude that subtraction is not commutative. Right? Not commutative for whole numbers.
this is what we have got as a result and you can verify this for lots of numbers so just to summarize our discussion on commutative property for addition and subtraction right addition of whole numbers is commutative it follows the commutative property which implies that we can add two numbers in any order and the results will still be same whereas subtraction right subtraction of whole numbers is not commutative which means if you change the order of the